Good day, viewers. You're welcome to Chemistry Hangout. I want to believe we are fine today. The long-awaited WAEC practical for chemistry is here. So I want you to take a seat so that you can see what I have for you for today. And if you are new to this channel, I want you to click on the subscribe button. This is one of the channels that will give you a defined and educative content as far as as chemistry is consigned so if you are a new subscriber i welcome you just click the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that when i upload any video you are going to be notified so all the people that have sent me message to check on me thank you i appreciate thanks for the word of encouragement i love you guys so let's see what i have for you for today don't forget this is chemistry and out i will not do anything than giving you the best so we have come with the prediction for this year so let's see how the prediction goes and let's see how to answer that question so there's a prediction for this year you see i wrote 2023 wire chemistry practice that is the titration aspect okay so this is the prediction for this year i said a is a is 0 0.100 mole per dm cube of acl b is a solution containing 2.5 gram of sodium trisocarbonate dot xh2o in 500 centimeter cube of solution okay put a into the burette and titrate against 20 or 25 portion of b using methyl orange as the indicator repeat the titration to obtain consistent tighter values tabulate your readings and calculate the average of what of acid use so let's quickly start that like we normally do let's quickly start that like we normally do okay so let's have the acid this is the acid here okay so let's start with okay let's start with this so i have the funnel let's fill our bread with acid so we are going to be doing it practically like we normally do so this will enable confidence okay this will enable confidence that's too much so let's have it on the zero mark perfect so before I start, let's let me take my burette readings. Okay, so let me have a table. Okay, my marker. So let me have my burette readings. Burette readings. Okay. I have my my final. Please, very important. The unit is very important. Please, very very important. So this will be my final readings. Okay. This will be my initial readings, okay? This is going to be my rough in centimeter cube. So I'm going to do two order as because of time. So this is my first centimeter cube, okay? This is my second centimeter cube. So I'm going to take three rough first and second. That's what I'll be doing, okay? So this is my final readings. Mm -hmm. This is my initial readings, then I will have volume of acid used. Okay, so my initial readings now is on 0 0.00, that's where I'll be starting my titration from. Let's see the indicator we are going to be using material, a very important state indicator. What is the indicator we are going to be using? That will be material orange and the volume of pipette. That we are going to be using is 25, 25 centimeter. I hope that's clear. Okay, so fill to the mark and remove my funnel. Then I'll pipette my base. So this is my base. This is my base. So let me pipette my base now. Okay, so that's my my base into the conical flux. Okay, so I have two drops of material range here as indicator one and two. That's what I choose to then 
I'll begin my titration. is about to change can you see that now can you see so this is nine this is nine on dot nine point zero zero that's what i'm having here so my final reading here is nine point zero zero can you see that now so i'll quickly run this here I'll run it here, swirl the conical flax to so quickly. I don't want to refill because you know the tighter value is a bit small. I have 50 centimeter cube here, so I can just run from that very particular place. So I pipette again. Okay. That's another 25. Okay. Gently. Then I have my my material range. Two drops. One. Two. I will begin the second one. Very important. Can see that? Can you see it? So let's check the readings. Seventeen point seven zero. Seventeen point seven. So my initial now, you know, I didn't refill the bread. So my initial now will be nine point zero zero. Then my first will be seventeen point seven zero. That's my first. I can still continue the titration. Yeah, I can continue the titration because you know. This is around 17.70 and I have 50. So I can still continue the titration from there because of time. So we are doing all these things practically to help us, okay? So that it will help us as students, okay? So you know all these things, they are not difficult. You just need to learn them and that's why you have this channel. So you just need to learn them the right way and boom, you are okay. So So we we'll move from there see our two drops So we we'll start again let's go Can you see that? You can see. So, what's our readings? Let me adjust this. 26.40. Use this. 26.40. 26, sorry. The initial. You know, we didn't refill. So, it will be 17. Point seven zero. Then this is twenty six point four point seven. I hope this is very clear. So after that, what do we do? We do our subtraction. So this becomes nine point zero zero. Okay. So let's subtract that seventeen point seven zero minus nine point zero zero. That's giving us eight point seven zero. Okay. So let's see this twenty six point four zero. Minus seventeen point seven zero. Okay, perfect. Eight point seven zero. Very very important. I've said that there must be a concordant value. Very important. If you are using raw first, second, and third, if you have done the practical very well, two out of your first, second, and third should be the same. It's a rule. 
Yes. In fact, if you check the work, uh, work marking guide, it is stated here that there is mark if you have consistent titles. So very important. So if you are using three, then two should be the same. The reason is because it shows that you have dutifully and carefully carried out the titration and it gives you more marks. So this is a perfect titration. Then from there, what do we do? Don't forget to educator. We have written that your volume of pipette, you have written that that's 25 centimeter cube. Then from here now, I can now have my average volume of acid used. So I can have average volume of acid used. So I'm taking the two. So I have 8.70 plus 8.70 divided by what? Two. So my average volume of acid used is going to be 8.70 centimeter. Okay, so that's sorted. So for this place, calculate the average volume of acid used. That's after they have given us the equation of reaction. Then they said, from your result, let's now see this. From your result, calculate the concentration of B in mole per dm cube. Let's go back to the question. This is B. I have told you, if you have been watching my video, anytime you want to calculate concentration first, the first formula that will come to your mind is mole is equal to mass over molar mass. So let's check if this formula can solve it. So we are calculating mole, okay? They gave us directly or indirectly, we are giving the mass. So, once we get our mole, directly or indirectly, the mass is given. Though this is not the real mass, but we can actually get the real mass from this information. But we cannot calculate the molar mass because there is an x here. So, we don't know the value of x, meaning we cannot use this formula because mole is missing, molar mass is missing. And I hope that is clear. So, we cannot use this. So, what do we result to? We, we then use our formula, our titration formula CA VA over CB VB. Equals to N A over N B. Don't forget, I'm solving Roman figure one. So the C A now, what is our C A? That's the concentration of acid. It's given already in the question. You can see that it's 0 0.100 times what is the volume of acid we have gotten at 8.70 over what is the concentration of base? That's what we are looking for. Times what is the volume of base is given here. 25 equals to what is the number of moles of acid? Let's go to the equation. This is acid. Number of moles of acid is 2. Number of moles of base is 1. So we have 2 over 1. Let me partition this place. Okay, so from here, what do we do? We make CB the subject. So we have CB to be equal to 0 0.100 times 8.70 times 1 over 25 times 2. Can you see that? So our CB will be what? Let's see. 8.70 okay, times 0 0.100 divided by 50. And that's giving us 0 0.0174. 0 0.0174. Can you see? Mole per dm Sorted. Concentration of B is sorted. Now, they said 2. Concentration of B in gram per dm cube. Let's go back to the question. If you are familiar with my videos, you should understand. I've always said that the standard measurement in chemistry laboratory, the standard measurement in when you are preparing reagents is 1 dm cube. But if you look at this, they said 2.5 gram in 500. Can you see that now? So which means this one now is in 2.5 gram per 500. But they want us to look for concentration of B in gram per dm cube. So per dm cube means 1 dm cube. And 1 dm cube is the same thing as 1,000 centimeter cube. So how do I get this? Then I bring this. I'll bring this now and say, okay, from my figure 2, concentration of B in gram per dm cube. So I will say 2.5 gram is in 250 centimeter cube. It's in 500, sorry. According to the question, it's in 500. So they have 2.5 gram in 500. That's what they did. So in 1000 centimeter cube, what would be this? Do you understand that now? So our S will be 2.5 times 1000 over. 500. So our x is so let's see 2.5 times 1000 divide 500. That's giving us 5 gram. So 5 gram per dm cube. Can you see that? So the concentration of B in gram per dm cube is 5 gram per dm cube. So check this. They might put 250 
It might be 750, it might be 1000. Okay, so you need to do this. But if you have it like this, you don't need to convert again because if you have it like this, 5 grams per DM cube, that's the standard measurement, which is 5 grams in 1000 centimeter cube. So you won't do anything. But if you have it in 250, in 500, in 750, it has to be converted back to 1000 to get the concentration of B in gram per DM cube. Very, very important. Now, the next question, which is question number three, says the value of X. In Na2CO3.xH2O. Now, how do I get the value of x? Very, very important. Do I have the mole? That's that's why I said this formula is very, very germane. Very important. Do I have the mole? Do I have the mole of this? Yes, this is the mole here. Do you get that now? Do I have the do I have the mass of this? Yes, I have gotten the mass. That's clear. So for me to get x now, I need to get the molar mass of this. In some questions, they will even tell you to calculate the molar mass of this. But if you want to get x, you need to calculate the molar mass of this. Maybe they ask you to calculate it in the question, or they do not ask you to calculate it in the question. They know you cannot get x without getting the molar mass. So sometimes when I include it in the question, I calculate the molar mass of this. They are even making it simpler. Okay. So but if you have to calculate the value of x, you must use the molar mass. So maybe they are telling me in the question to calculate molar mass or not, in as much as they are telling me to calculate x, then I must get the molar mass. So what do we do? We come back here and say, our mole that's, is equal to our mass over our molar mass. Don't forget this was in mole per dm cube. Very important. This one is in gram per dm cube. This one is in gram per mole. So we make molar mass the subject here. So our molar mass will now be what? Our molar mass will now be mass over mole. So what is the mass? 5 gram per dm cube. Okay? What is the mole? 0 0.0174 mole per dm cube. Definitely dm cube we cancel dm cube. So we have my molar mass to be equal to, let's see, our calculator. 5 divide 0 0.0174. So that's giving me 287 point, let me say 4, 287, let me say 0.4 gram per mole. Please, very, very important. The unit is very, very important. The unit is very, very important. So this is not what they asked me to calculate, but there is no way I can get X if I did not get my molar mass. So what do I do? I want to calculate the value of X now. Then I will now come and say Na2. CO3.xH2O is equal to what is the molar mass? 287.4. Can you see that now? So they are giving me sodium in the question, all these atomic masses. So I'll say 23 times 2 plus 12, okay, plus 16 times 3 plus x into bracket 1 times 2 plus 16 is equal to 287.4. I want to believe you are still following. This will give me 46 plus 12, plus 40, plus 48, plus, this is 1 times 2 will be 2, plus 16, that's 18, times x will give me 18x, equals to 287.4. I want to believe you are following. So let's add this together. 46 plus 12 plus 48. That's giving me 106, okay? So this will give me 106, okay? Plus 18x equals to 287.4. So our 18x will be what? 287.4. Bring this to the other side, it becomes minus 106. So our 18x will be what? Our 287.4 minus 106. That's giving me 181.4. 181.4. Do you get that now? So we are dividing both sides by 18 because we are looking for x. So our x becomes divide 18. Divide 18. That's giving me 10.07. 10.07. Let's just say 10.1. So it has given me 10.1. So the value of x here is what is 10 approximately. Like I just took the whole number is equal to what? Is equal to 10. I hope this is clear, very clear. I want to believe this is very clear. So if, if they ask you to calculate the molar mass, fine. But in as much as they ask you to calculate for x, you must go through the molar mass. Very clear. 
Very good. So the next one is what is the percentage composition of water of crystallization? So now the salt is now Na two C O three dot ten H two O. That's the salt. So they say what is the percentage composition of water of crystallization? Where is the water of crystallization here? Yeah, this is it. Okay, so we want to look for the percentage composition. So that would be number four. Figure four. So percentage composition will now be 10 H2O over the total compound Na2CO3 dot XH2O times 100 over 1. That's how we look for the percentage composition of the water here. So 10 times this, that will give us 180. Because I've done this 1 times 2 plus 16, that's 2 plus 16, 18 plus 10, that gives us 1, that's 180 over that percentage of, let me write that, so the percentage of water, of what? Crystallization. Okay? So that would be, that would be 180, 180 over, what is the molar mass of this? We have gotten that before. That's 287.4, 287.4 times 100 over 1. So our percentage water of crystallization is going to be what? Let's use our calculator now. So we have 180 times 100 divided 287.4. So that's giving me 62 points. Let me say 6%. Hello, good day viewers. You're welcome to Chemistry Hangouts. I want to believe we are fine today. The long-awaited WAEC practical for chemistry is here. So I want you to take a seat so that you can see what I have for you for today. And if you are new to this channel, I want you to click on the subscribe button. This is one of the channel that will give you a defined and educative content as far as chemistry is concerned. So if you are a new subscriber, I welcome you. Just click the subscribe button and click the notification bell so that when I upload any video, you are going to be notified. So all the people that have sent me message to check on me, thank you. I appreciate. Thanks for the word of encouragement. I love you guys. So let's see what I have for you for today. Don't forget this is chemistry hangout. I will not do anything than giving you the best. So we have come with the prediction for this year. So let's see how the prediction goes and let's see how to answer that question. So there's a prediction for this year. You see, I wrote 2023 YA chemistry practical. This is the titration aspect. Okay, so this is the prediction for this year. I said A is a is 0 0.100 mole per dm cube of ACL. B is a solution containing 2.5 gram of Sodium trisocarbonate dot XH2O in 500 centimeter cube of solution. Okay, put A into the burette and titrate against 20 or 25 portion of B using methy orange as the indicator. Repeat the titration to obtain consistent tighter values. Tabulate your readings and calculate the average of what of acid use. So let's quickly start that like we normally do. Let's quickly start that like we normally do. Okay, so let's have the acid. This is the acid here. Okay, so let's start with okay, let's start with this. So I have the funnel. Let's fill our bread with acid. So we are going to be doing it practically like we normally do. So this will enable confidence. Okay, this will enable confidence. That's too much. So let's add it on the zero mark. Perfect. So. Before I start, let's let me take my burette readings, okay? So let me have a table, okay, my marker. So let me have my burette readings, burette readings, okay? I have my my final. Please, very important. The unit is very important. Please, very very important. So this will be my final readings, okay? This will be my initial readings, okay? This is going to be my rough in centimeter cube. So I'm going to do two order as because of time. So this is my first centimeter cube, okay? This is my second 
centimeter tree. So I'm going to take three prop first and second. That's what I'll be doing. Okay, so this is my final readings. Mm -hmm. This is my initial readings. Then I'll have volume of acid used. Okay, so my initial readings now is on 0, 0.00. That's where I'll be starting my titration from. Let's see the indicator. We're going to be using material. Very important. State it indicator. What is the indicator we are going to be using? That will be methyl orange and the volume of pipette that we are going to be using is 25 25 centimeter. Okay. I hope that's clear. Okay, so fill to the mark and remove my funnel. Then I'll pipette my base. So this is my base. This is my base. So let me pipette my base now. So, gently. Okay. So that's my my base into the conical flux. Okay. So I have two drops of material range here as indicator. One and two. That's what I choose to then I begin my titration. very well gently is about to change can you see that now can you see so this is nine this is nine on dot nine point zero zero that's what I'm having here so my final release here is nine point zero zero can you see that now so I'll quickly run this here. So I'll run it here. Swirl the conical flux to quickly. I don't want to refill because you know the tidal value is a bit small. I have 50 centimeter cube here. So I can just run from that very particular place. So I pipette again. Okay, that's another 25, okay, gently, then I have my, my material range, two drops, one, two, I will begin the second one, very important. Can see that? Can you see it? So, let's check the readings. 17.70. 17.7. So, my initial now, you know, I didn't refill the bread. So, my initial now will be 9.00. Then, my first will be 17.70. That's my first. I can still continue the titration. Yeah, I can continue the titration because, you know, this is around 17.70 and I have 50. So I can still continue the titration from there because of time. So we are doing all these things practically to help us, okay? So that it will help us as students, okay? So you know all these things, they are not difficult. You just need to learn them and that's why you have this channel. So you just need to learn them the right way and boom, you are okay. Okay. 
two. So we move from there. See our two drops. So we start again. Let's go. Can you see that? You can see. So, what's our readings? Let me adjust this 26.40. Use this 26.40. 26, sorry. The initial, you know, we didn't refill. So, it will be 17. 0.70 and this is 26.47. I hope this is very clear. So after that, what do we do? We do our subtraction. So this becomes 9.00. Okay. So let's subtract that 17.70 minus 9.00. That's giving us 8.70. Okay. So let's see this 26.40. Minus seventeen point seven zero. Okay, perfect. Eight point seven zero. Very very important. I've said that there must be a concordant value. Very important. If you are using raw first, second, and third, if you have done the practical very well, two out of your first, second, and third should be the same. It's a rule. Yes. In fact, if you check the work or uh, work marking guide, it is stated here that there is mark if you have consistent titans so very important so if you are using three then two should be the same the reason is because it shows that you have dutifully and carefully carried out the titration and it gives you more marks so this is a perfect titration then from there what do we do don't forget your educator you have written that your volume of pipette you have written that that's 25 centimeter cube then from here now i can now have my average volume of acid used so i can have average volume of acid used so i'm taking the two so i have 8.70 plus 8.70 divided by what two so my average volume of acid used is going to be 8.70 centimeter okay okay so that's something so for this place calculate the average volume of acid used that's what they are giving us the equation of reaction. Then they said, from your results, let's now see this. From your results, calculate the concentration of B in mole per DNK. Let's go back to the question. This is B. I have told you, if you have been watching my video, anytime you want to calculate concentration first, the first formula that will come to your mind is mole is equal to mass over molar mass. So let's check if this formula can solve it. So we are calculating mole, okay? They gave us directly and indirectly, we are giving the mass. So once you get our mole, directly and indirectly, the mass is given. Though this is not the real mass, but we can actually get the real mass from this information. But we cannot calculate the molar mass because there is an x here. So we don't know the value of x, meaning we cannot use this formula because mole is missing, molar mass is missing. And I hope that is clear. So we cannot use this. So what do we result to? We then use our formula, our titration formula, C A V A over C B V B equals to n a over n b don't forget i'm solving roman figure one so the c a now what is our c a that's the concentration of acid is given already in the question you can see that is 0 0.100 times what is the volume of acid we have gotten that 8.70 over what is the concentration of base that's what we are looking for times what is the volume of base is given here 25 equals to what is the number of moles of acid? Let's go to the equation. This is acid. Number of moles of acid is 2. Number of moles of base is 1. So we have 2 over 1. Let me partition this place. Okay, so from here, what do we do? We make CB the subject. So we have CB to be equal to 0 0.100 times 8.70 times 1 over 25 times 2. Can you see that? So our CB will be what? Let's see. 8.70 okay, times 0 0.100 divided by 50. And that's giving us 0 0.0174. 
0.0174. Can you see? Mole per dm cube. Sorted. Concentration of B is sorted. Now they said 2. Concentration of B in gram per dm cube. Let's go back to the question. If you are familiar with my videos, you should understand. I've always said that the standard measurement in chemistry laboratory, the standard measurement in when you are preparing reagents is 1 dm cube. But if you look at this, they said 2.5 gram in 500. Can you see that now? So which means this one now is in 2.5 gram per 500. But they want us to look for concentration of B in gram per dm cube. So per dm cube means 1 dm cube. And 1 dm cube is the same thing as 1,000 centimeter cube. So how do I get this? Then I bring this. I'll bring this now and say, okay, from my figure 2, concentration of B in gram per dm cube. So I will say 2.5 gram is in 250 centimeter cube. It's in 500, sorry. According to the question, it's in 500. So they have 2.5 gram in 500. That's what they did. So in 1,000 centimeter cube, what would be this? Do you understand that now? So our S will be 2.5 times 1,000 over 500. So our X is, so let's see, 2.5 times 1,000 divide 500 that's giving us 5 gram so 5 gram per dm cube can you see that so the concentration of b in gram per dm cube is 5 gram per dm cube so check this they might put 250 it might be 750 it might be 1000 okay so you need to do this but if you have it like this you don't need to convert again because if you have it like this 5 gram per dm cube that's the standard measurement which is 5 gram in 1,000 centimeter cube. So you won't do anything. But if you have it in 250, in 500, in 750, it has to be converted back to 1,000 to get the concentration of B in gram per dm. Very, very important. Now the next question, which is question number three, says the value of X in Na2CO3.xH2O. Now, how do I get the value of X? Very, very important. Do I have the mole? That's, that's why I said this formula is very, very germane. Very important. Do I have the mole? Do I have the mole of this? Yes, this is the mole here. Do you get that now? Do I have the do I have the mass of this? Yes, I have gotten the mass. That's clear. So for me to get x now, I need to get the molar mass of this. In some questions, they will even tell you to calculate the molar mass of this. But if you want to get x, you need to calculate the molar mass of this. Maybe they ask you to calculate it in the question, or they do not ask you to calculate it in the question. They know you cannot get x without getting the molar mass. So sometimes when I include it in the question, I calculate the molar mass of this. They are even making it simpler, okay? So but if you have to calculate the value of x, you must use the molar mass. So maybe they are telling me the question to calculate molar mass or not. In as much as they are telling me to calculate x, then I must get the molar mass. So what do we do? We come back here and say our mole that's, is equal to our mass over our molar mass. Don't forget this was in mole per dm cube, very important. This one is in gram per dm cube. This one is in gram per mole. So we make molar mass the subject here. So our molar mass will now be what? Our molar mass will now be mass over mole. So what is the mass? 5 gram per dm cube, okay? What is the mole? 0 0.0174 mole per dm cube. Definitely dm cube we cancel dm cube. So we have my molar mass to be equal to, let's see, our calculator, 5 divide 0 0.0174. So that's giving me 287 points, let me say 4, 287, let me say 0.4 gram per mole. Please, very, very important, the unit is very very important the unit is very very important so this is not what they asked me to calculate but there is no way i can get x if i did not get my molar mass so what do i do i want to calculate the value of x now then i'll now come and say na2co3.xh2o is equal to what is the molar mass 287.4 can you see that now so they are giving me sodium in the question all these atomic masses so i'll say 23 times 2 plus 12, okay, plus 16 times 3 plus x into bracket 1 times 2 plus 16 
is equal to 287.4. I want to believe you are still following. This will give me 46 plus 12 plus 40 plus 48 plus this is 1 times 2 will be 2 plus 16. That's 18 times x will give me 18x equals to 287.4. I want to believe you are following. So let's add this together. 46 plus 12 plus 48. That's giving me 106. Okay, so this will give me 106, okay? Plus 18x equals to 287.4. So our 18x will be what? 287.4. Bring this to the other side, it becomes minus 106. So our 18x will be what? Our two two eight seven point four minus one o six. That's giving me one eight one point four. One eight one point four. Do you get that now? So we are dividing both sides by eighteen because we are looking for x. So our x becomes divide eighteen. Divide eighteen. That's giving me ten point zero seven. 10.07, let's just say 10.1. So it has given me 10.1. So the value of x here is what is 10 approximately. Like I want to the whole number is equal to what is equal to 10. I hope this is clear, very clear. I want to believe this is very clear. So if, if they ask you to calculate the molar mass, fine. But in as much as they ask you to calculate for x, you must go through the molar mass. Very clear, very clear. So the next one is, what is the percentage composition of water of crystallization? So now, the salt is now na 2 co 310 h 20 That's the salt. So they say, what is the percentage composition of water of crystallization? Where is the water of crystallization here? Yeah, this is it. Okay? So we want to look for the percentage composition. So that would be number four. Figure four. So percentage composition will now be 10H2O over the total compound Na to CO3 dot XH2 O times 100 over 1. That's how we look for the percentage composition of water here. So 10 times this, that will give us 180. Because I've done this 1 times 2 plus 16. That's 2 plus 16, 18 plus 10. That will give us 1, that's 180 over that's percentage of, let me write that. So the percentage of water of what crystallization. Okay, so that would be that would be 180, 180 over what is the molar mass of this? We have gotten that before. That's 287.4, 287.4 times 100 over 1. So our percentage water of crystalline. Is going to be what? Let's use our calculator now. So we have 180 times 100 divided 287.4. So that's giving me 62 points. Let me say 6%. That's, that's the water of crystallization that is there. So these things are step by step. That's why you have to get it one after the other, one after the other, so that you don't. You know, you don't fail the whole question. So, okay, the next question now is the volume of gas liberated at STP. The volume of gas liberated at STP. So let's come to the equation of reaction. From the equation of reaction, we see one mole of this, okay, gave one mole of CO2. That's the geometry, the chemistry. One mole of this, because this is a place, this is what will liberate CO2. So, on reaction of ACL with this, this one mole of this liberates one mole of CO2. So that's what I'm starting from. That's the V part. So one mole of Na2CO3.xH2 or Na2CO3 is equal to one mole of CO2. Can we see that now? So one mole of this liberates one mole of this. One mole of this from the equation of reaction liberates one mole of this. So, and I know that my molar volume given in the question 22.4. Of gas at STP. So one mole of Na2CO3 will be equal to 
DMP of this, which is the molar volume of gas at STP. So what is the mole in the question now? Look at it. It's 0 0.0174 of this. So if one mole of this, like one mole of this, which is 22.4 DMP, is 0 0.0174 of this that we have gotten, we liberate what? We liberate X. So 0 0.0174 we liberate what? That's moles. Or more per DMP, we liberate X. So from there, our X is going to be 0 0.0174 times 22.4. Let's see that. Let's see what that will give us. 0 0.0174 times 22.4. That's giving us 0 0.389. So let's just say X is 0 0.3, let's say 9 DMP. Now, from here, now, if you look at this, you are having is 0 0.39, the presence of volume of gas liberated at STP. Don't forget, I told you, I said it's this base here that gave us the opportunity to be able to get this, okay? So if this is 0 0.39 DMQ, it means in one DMQ. But remember that the volume of pipettes is 25 centimeter cube because out of the one DMQ of the solution prepared, the volume of base used is 25 centimeter cube. Do you understand? So for this one, I will now say, I will now say from here, I said if one, if one of this, you understand, if is 0.39 of this is in what? Is in one dm cube or 1000 centimeter cube. Because we have this 0.39 in one dm cube. But we did not prepare, you, we did not use one dm cube. We use 25 centimeter cube of the base. I hope that is clear. So 0.39 in one dm cube or 1000 centimeter cube, anyone? Let's, let's make use of 1,000, which is the familiar one. Let me say 1,000 centimeter cube, which is the same thing as 1 DMQ. Okay, so 25 is 0 0.39 in 1 DMQ, which is 1,000 centimeter cube. I hope that is clear. So 25 centimeter cube will not give us one because we use 25 centimeter cube of the base, not 1,000. So we now do what? We now do X. So from there, we are now going to have our X to be 0 0.39 times what? 25 over 1,000. So our x will be what? Let's see. 0 0.3, 0 0.39 times 25 divide 1,000. That's giving us 0 0.00975 DMQ. Can you see that? So very important, please take note of this. After doing this, we got 0 0.39 DMQ. But we didn't use one DMQ of the base, we used 25. Very clear. So it's 0 0.39 in one DMQ, which is 1,000 centimeter cube. This is it. But the first one volume of gas liberated as ST. So for this one now, for this one, liberating this one, we use 25 of this. So if 0 0.39 is giving me 1,000, the 25 that I use will be giving and this, so this will be 0 0.0975 DM cube, or if you want to leave the outside centimeter cube, yeah, just can just say times 1000. You know that for national rate, which will be 9.75 9 CM cube. So you can leave the answer like this, you can leave the answer, it's still the same thing because 1 DM cube is still the same thing as say 1000 centimeter cube. I hope, I hope that is clear. Now, I want to make an emphasis. Let me lay a strong emphasis here. That's just the question. Go over it, you'll you get it. Now, look at this. They said concentration of B gram per DMP. That's what we saw. But the question can come in form of concentration of the hydrous salt in gram per DMQ. Instead of them, the question can come in concentration of the hydrous salt or concentration of Na2CO3 in gram per DMQ. If you look at that, what we prepared, or the equation of reaction is telling us this is an hydrated salt. But now they, are, they ask us to calculate concentration of B, a concentration of a hydrous salt. If they ask to calculate concentration of a hydrous salt, how do you go about it? Please pay attention. Let's assume that's what they gave you. For the hydrous salt, now it will not be only this without what including the water here. So if I want to get the concentration of this in what? In graph at the end, it will now be my mass. To be equal to mole times molar mass. You see that now? So our mass is now going to be what is our mole? We have gotten that 0 0.0174. Times what is the molar mass of this? If you calculate the molar mass of this, 
using our normal 23 times 2 plus 12 plus 16 times 3 is going to give you 106. Yes. So, if you now do your 0 0.0174 times 106, you'll be getting 1.84 gram rising. So, the max is going to be 1.84 gram. Do you see that now for GMP? So, if they ask you to calculate the hydros, concentration of the hydros sum, this is what you, you do. Because the 5 gram we got here is telling us the salt plus the water, which is the hydrated sum. So, please get that right. That's the reason why, if you are answering the question, please read it very, very well. Read the question very well before you know what to do. So, for this one, concentration of B in gram per DMP, all this is B, this, all this is the B, the salt and the water. But if the question comes like this, concentration of hydros, hydros means only the dry salt. So it's going to be more than smaller mass, one of six, removing the water. So that is that, if that is the question. And very, very important, this is just what we are expecting. I have told you, this channel is, you know, is aimed at giving us the best. We want to try all our possible best to see that we gain confidence, gain mastery in chemistry. That's what we are doing all this. So please pay attention to the details here, study very, very well, and I'm sure that you are going to come out wonderfully well. Very important, let me quickly say this, the qualitative analysis is ready, and I've said that because of a whole lot of things. Chemistry teacher out there can bear me witness that this thing costs a lot of money, the stress and everything. So the qualitative analysis is ready too, and it's going to be a private thing to send down. But please, the, the token that will be paid for the qualitative analysis is not one expensive thing. A lot of people have reached out to me, they have gotten it. Thanks for your word of encouragement. Thanks for your the motivation. Thanks for the prayer. So please, the, the talking, it's a talking just to appreciate what we are doing here. And I think it is necessary with all the expensive reagents that we have to get this year to make sure that this thing actually moves. So a lot of people have reached out to me. I love you guys. Thank you so much. But please, it's not going to be one expensive fee. Our aim here is to make you better, to give you confidence in your exam. And that's what we are still doing. So if you need a qualitative analysis, it's not going to be posted on the channel soon. If you need it to read for your exam, or you want to prepare your student with it, you can reach out to me. My number is on the screen. You can still reach out to me for the qualitative analysis. But this is what we are actually expecting for the, for the titration. This is what we are expecting. Just go over it over and over again. And I tell you, it's not going to be a problem. And lastly, for the qualitative analysis for people that have you know, got in it. The letters doesn't mind, doesn't matter rather. Maybe one is C or one is D, doesn't matter. It is the test that matters. On that day, you might be seeing A and B. On that day, you might be seeing J and K. But it is the test for those specimen. So when they are testing for a specimen and you see the reagent, you know the specimen they are already testing for. So not the letters. Anyone can be A, anyone can be B, anyone can be E. But it is the test remains. Irrespective of the letters, the test for each specimen will remain. So go over it. I am sure, I told them the qualitative analysis, I am 70% sure that the analysis we have done and some people have gotten it will be, you know, will be 70% correct with the analysis we have done. We love you guys. For people that have reached out to me, the prayers, I love you guys. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the prayer, the word of encouragement, the motivation. You guys are the one keeping me going. I love you guys. If you are new to this channel, please subscribe to this channel. There are more things to come. Even after the exam, we are still going to be, you know, we are still going to be posting informative and educative content that will help us. This is Chemistry Hangout. Subscribe if you have not subscribed. If you have subscribed, thank you so much. For all my students, I wish you success in your exam. Thank you so much. I love you.